Hi there, so in this video I'm going to show you two different ways that you can go about creating your own custom Google Map. So I'm here just at the basic Google Maps website and if I want to create a custom map one way that I can do it is just by simply scrolling down to the bottom uh, right corner of the page and looking for the little gear icon and choosing My Places. What My Places does is it takes me to actually the old version of Google Maps um, but it's a place that I can create a map. And what I would recommend the first time is over here on the left where it says create map, first start by creating with classic My Maps. And I'm going to show you the difference between this and then the other one, which is really for Maps Engine Lite. So I'm going to click create with classic My Maps and give my map a title. So maybe um, I just decided to do something with my um, students about um, maybe like an ancestry project or a hometown project or state capitals project, whatever you name it, but something where there's some different geographic points. So I'm going to do hometown. And I can give a little description, so uh, create a place mark for your hometown. All right, so I got a little something there. So now what I can do is I can type into the little search field up here at the top the location where I want to put my place mark. So I actually grew up in a small town north of Sacramento called Yuba City. So here I am, and I can use the little navigation tools to maybe find a place for Yuba City. So let's say I want to put my place mark in this general vicinity. All I have to do is click on the little, little teardrop icon and just move my mouse and drop it and it opens up a little box. And so I can say hometown Joe Wood. And over on the right I can choose different push pins depending on what I'm interested in or how it relates to my map. So I'll just choose this yellow one. And across the top here, I can choose rich text, or I can edit the HTML, or just work in plain text. I want to use rich text because it gives me these little buttons at the top that I can work with. So then I can write a little paragraph. So I grew up in a small town north of Sacramento. And I can write as little or as much as I want. One of the things that you can do with rich text that's pretty cool is you can actually change the font a little bit. Um, you know, just do some size adjustments, color adjustments. You also can insert hyperlinks, so you have to highlight the word first, but then you can click on the hyperlink tool and it lets you bring in a link. It'll also allow you to bring in a photo. So if I click on this little photo tool, the photo has to be online someplace else though. So you might use Flickr or another Creative Commons um, license site to gather your picture, but basically you just put a link to the picture there and it'll show up in your map. So we'll pretend for a second my map's done, so I'm, or my place mark's done, so I'm going to hit OK. And we'll pretend that my map's done too. So I can just hit done and it actually saved it for me as well. So now I have my one little place mark here and I can go in at any time and continue to edit this map. What I can also do though in the old version of Google Maps is collaborate. And so I could invite individual students or what's probably easier to do is just to for your class set it to allow anyone to edit this map and hit OK. And then if you go to the little web link tool up here, this link at the top is what you can actually copy and paste to your website and it will navigate students to the map and then you just have to teach them to hit the edit button and they can start editing. They will need a Google account to do this though, so it works best if you're in a Google Apps for Education environment. So that's the one way. The other way that I was going to show you, so let me go back here to the regular maps, is using a tool called Maps Engine Lite. So just like before, I'm going to click on the little gear and go to my places. And this time, rather than sitting, clicking or create with classic maps, I'm going to say create map. And so this starts a new program called Maps Engine Lite. And I can create a new map or open a map. I want to create a new map. And now that I have my map here, this is where Google um, or Maps Engine Lite tends to be a really cool tool. So in one sense, in the old version of Maps, it's really easy to collaborate. You can put pictures and stuff in your place marks, which is kind of nice. But let's say, for instance, you had a ton of data that you wanted to turn into a map. So for example, um, I sent out a little survey, or I put together a Google form and sent it out via Twitter, Facebook, Google+, for the best hiking and biking trails in the area. So people came along, they filled out my Google form, they put in the name of a trail, the type of trail, the address or the latitude, longitude for the trail, and description, you know, why should we check it out? and they hit submit. And what that led to was this particular spreadsheet. So on this spreadsheet, I actually have about 20 responses here. And you can see you know, the name of the trail, what type of trail. Some people put in 
an address. Some people just put in uh, latitude or longitude. It even accidentally duplicated one of my questions here. So I have type of trail. It didn't show up twice in the form, but it just showed up twice in the responses. So what I did have to do though was do a little data cleanup. So I actually just copied and pasted this data over to a new spreadsheet where I have the name, the type, and then I kind of ended up merging the location a little bit and, um, and making sure that in this one column that I now call just location, it either has an address or it has the latitude and longitude. And so now that I have my data cleaned up a little bit, what I can do is go back to my um, map here in Maps Engine Lite, and I can give it a title, so Best Hiking and Biking Trails. If I want, I can give it a description. I don't have to though, I'm gonna hit save. And now what I can do is I can click on import. And so it'll let me bring an actual CSV file, or I can go into Google Drive and look for the spreadsheet that I called best hiking and biking data cleanup. There it is. And so now it's looking into Google Drive and it's finding that spreadsheet. The first time you do this, it may ask you, you know, if you'd like to accept uh, its ability to do that, etc. So it's fetching. Give it a second or two here. Let me try this again, because normally not this slow. So let me hit cancel, try import again. There we go, it worked a little bit faster that time. So the first thing it's gonna ask me to do is to choose the columns that position your place mark. So I wanna use the column that I titled location I'm going to hit continue. And then which column is going to be the title of the place mark? So I'm going to put name of trail. And now I'm going to hit finish. And so what it's actually doing right now is it's creating a new layer that has all of these different place marks in it. So you see I have some in California, some in Oregon, even some way over in Michigan. So if I were to click on one of these place marks, it actually opens up a little box with the information that the individual provided. So this particular one, you know, what time they entered it, um, that's a hiking trail, it's in Susanville, um, and then even a little bit of information. If I click on another one, you can see this person gave me a little bit more information. So it's, you know, whatever information the individual provided for you. And you can edit it. So if you found a typo in it, you could click that little pencil and, and edit it. But one of the things that I really like about Maps Engine Lite is if I zoom back out here a second, so that I, you know, with some very basic data, I was able to make a map. But what I can actually start doing is I can work on editing the style a little bit. So um, I can choose different types of styles. I can style data by column. So for instance, I, I can change this to type of trail, for instance. And now all of the blue ones are hiking trails. All of the red ones are mountain bike trails. And all of the like purple ones are road bike. But that purple and red look kind of similar. So maybe I'll change this to be more of like a yellowy orange color, just so it pops a little bit better. And so now I have a map where if I zoom in, and a lot of these are from the greater Sacramento area, I can see really quickly, oh, I have some hiking trails to check out. If I want to grab my road bike, I have some trails to check out as well, or some mountain bike trails. So anyway, that's two different ways that you can create a map using either Classic Maps or Maps Engine Lite. Uh, if you have any questions, I can be found on Twitter at, at UCDJoe.